If you're enjoying these late models on the Atomic Power Racing Hour, you need to be there in person. The Go Nuclear Late Model Challenge Series is coming to a track near you with all the dirt flinging, side-by-side -side racing, and bumper-to-bumper -bumper action that you can handle. Come see the cars and stars of the Atomic Power Racing Hour as they battle for bragging rights. Time's running out on the 2012 season. Catch the Go Nuclear Late Models before the final checkered flag falls. Catch the series September 14th and 15th for the Ellis Auto Mohawk National. Back at the Atomic Power Racing Hour, where 12 laps are complete of the 30-lap feature here at Mohawk. Still plenty of time to move forward, but no better time than right now on this double-file restart. The field is bunched up and ready to refire and chase the checkered, so here's Reg. On the initial start of the race, Dale Caswell was told he had to start on the outside of the front row. On the first two restarts of the night, Caswell has chosen that lane to put Sears back on the inside. He does it once again here on this lap 12 restart. And you have to wonder if Tim Sears has found something to start working the bottom. Just behind Tim Sears is the 25 of Greg Bellier. He continues to use the bottom to his liking. The restart now underway and Tim Sears with a good run to the inside. But it's Caswell for the fourth straight time making it stick on the outside of the racetrack. Tim Sears is gonna give him a good run back down to the inside. The driver who has been competing in modified and late models this year, unable to get back by, and Caswell leads the 13th straight lap. Jack Caswell now puts it to the inside of the racetrack. Meanwhile, a battle on for fourth. Phil Potts has the spot. Sean Beardsley wants it back. Beardsley, who was battling for second in the opening laps, has slid back just a little bit. You see his black and blue 18 a little loose off the corner. That will only get worse over the second half of this race. Good battles all the way back to round out the top 10. Brandon Kidd and Heat Race winner Aaron Jacobs going after that spot. A Syracuse driver on the outside, a Utica driver down on the bottom line of the speedway. It's certainly tough to navigate in dense traffic, but for Dale Caswell, no issues out in front of the field in clean air. A good battle shaping up for the runner-up spot. Greg Bellier continues to move forward. Puts it down on the inside of the speedway. You see Tim Sears throw the back end around in turn number four to make sure he keeps it off that turn four wall and hangs on to the runner-up spot. Again, the momentum is king up on the top of turn number two. He still has the runner-up spot, but the 25 with Greg Bellier is closing in. The veteran who had a rare appearance in a sprint car earlier this season. Closing back in on the 3T for the runner-up spot. And together they are starting to reel back in race leader Dale Caswell in the R19. That time, Sears was able to drive off the inside of turn number two and pull a car length over the number 25. But he pushes the nose in turn number four. He has to back out of the throttle, and here comes Bellier down on the inside. Greg Bellier, the Canadian, closing after Central New York's Tim Sears Jr. Off the corner, they nearly make contact and rock it down the back stretch into turn number three. Bellier with the advantage, throws it in there, but overcooks the corner. And now Sears crosses back to the inside. A little bit of contact as they enter turn number one. And look at the move by the youngster, Tim Sears Jr., former sportsman champion, able to get back in front of the number 25. Bellier shuts it down again on the inside of the speedway. This time doesn't try the slide job. Instead looks for a run here in a turn number one. Puts it down on the bottom of the speedway. And it'll be Sears. Oh, and contact me. Sears gets sideways. He hangs onto it. What a miraculous save by Tim Sears Jr., but he's going to have to hand over the runner-up spot to Greg Bellier as the laps are winding down and our leaders in lap traffic. With nine laps left to go, it is the 09 of Matt Vanderlinen and the 75 of Joe Banks just in front of the race leader as they work down to turn number three. Vanderlinen is running the line of race leader Dale Caswell. The R19 has been bound on the top of the racetrack the whole time and that is allowing second to third to close in. But they have their own battle to work out right now. Bellier down on the inside, hits a nice ribbon on the racetrack, able to scoot away by a car length, make it two now, as they work back into turn number three. Still lap traffic, the issue for the race leader of Dale Caswell. Going to the outside of Canadian David McDonald in the number 97. So he has now put three cars a lap down. Art Halliday, the next machine, he's gonna have to navigate by. Halliday, the team car to Dale Caswell. Goes to the bottom of the speedway and gives way to Caswell. He didn't know it was him closing in, but now that he knows who's the leader, it may work into Caswell's advantage. Bellier, the second place car in the number 25, able to put his machine underneath the first three lap cars, and now closes back in on the race leader. 
Sears also trying to get by that lap trio. He's on the inside of McDonald and has now done it. So Caswell continues to stretch out his advantage. You see Sears car just a little bit too tight around the speedway. And Bellier having a little bit of an issue getting around Halliday on the outside. Meanwhile, the new lap car to deal with is Brandon Kidd in the 14 for race leader Caswell, who now goes to the inside and makes that line stick here in the final stages. Dale Caswell has been mellifluous since the drop of the green flag. Hardly an issue and maybe just one more lap car for him to get by before he picks up the feature win here tonight. Bellier in clean track, just one lap car between himself and the race leader, chugging as hard as he can to pick up the win. Time is running out though, as Caswell works it perfectly off of turn number four, brings it back to the parallel sticks. There are just two more laps left to go. We have been caution free since lap number 12. Aaron Jacobs, the winner of heat race number one, is the one car that Dale Caswell will have to deal with here in the closing stages. He also runs the top of the racetrack, has no idea how close or how far away Bellier is here on the final circuit. Caswell taking no chances, going to the inside of the speedway, gets a little slipped up off of turn number two, but still holds a healthy advantage. Bellier is closing in, but off of turn number three and four, no issue for Dale Caswell. Wire to wire picks up the checkers. Second across the line, Bellier. Then Sears and Potts for third and fourth, then it's a while back to fifth, and it's still a battle back to the line. It looks like it's gonna go to A.J. Kingsley over Sean Beardsley. So Dale Caswell is the big winner here tonight, and he's headed to victory lane. But first, he needs to make weight on the scales. We'll meet him when we return. <laughs> 